Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspurn and today we're going to be reviewing these gorgeous wee purple beauties right here, the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. At 219 quid, these true wireless earbuds are even more expensive than the already pretty bloody pricey £179 Google Pixel Buds, while offering a lot of the same features including ANC, assistant integration, yada yada. But you've also got 24-bit audio support with certain Samsung blowers. You've got Bluetooth 5.3 support, bit of Bigsby action, if that's a good thing. I've had the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro stuffed to my skull for the last few days, using them as my full-time true wireless earbuds. So here's my in-depth review. And we're also going to do a bit side-by-side -side with the fresh new Google Pixel Buds Pro to see which one might be best for you. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now you've got a small selection of colours when it comes to the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. You can grab them in white or black, pretty standard stuff. Otherwise, also, this lovely Bora purple effort. And frankly, they look the nun's tits. They're just like having soft, smooth, colourful wee pebbles lodged in your lug holes, but in a good way. I really love that sleek, matte finish, no gloss in sight, so they don't get all greasy as you handle them, always a bonus. They certainly have a very premium vibe about them, which is just as well as you're spunking up over 200 quid for the buggers. My only complaint on the design would be that obvious seam between the front and the back sections, although you don't even see that when they are stuffed in your head. And the buds have a kind of wing section, this top bit that juts out, so when you put them in, you just stick them in with a twist, and that little bit kind of embeds itself underneath your ear flap and just helps to keep them very firmly in place. I found there's absolutely no shifting around whatsoever, even if you're pegging it down the pavement, doing a bit of a raw beside and whatever the hell you want to do. And just to prove the point, mosh test! And I felt like the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro were pretty comfortable to wear for a good few hours. I didn't feel any buildup of pressure or anything. Just started to get the usual ear fatigue after around three to four hours, at which point, yeah, definitely a good idea to pop them out again. So that's pretty similar to what I experienced with the Google Pixel Buds Pro as well. But as far as water resistant goes, these are definitely the winners because they're full on IPX7 water resistant, whereas the Pixel Buds are only IPX4 splash resistant. Both are fine for, you know, working out down the gym, sweating all over them, rocking in a rainstorm, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but these things can actually be submerged in water as well and still survive. So if I had to choose between Pixel and Samsung based on the design, I'd probably go for these because they're slightly more compact and you've got that water resistance. Otherwise, there's very little between them. Now, when it comes to actually hooking up to your handset, we've got the latest, freshest Bluetooth 5.3 support here on the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. And the range is absolutely insane, slightly better than what I found on the Pixel Buds Pro. I found I could leave my smartphone in the garden and then come into the house, wander up a flight of stairs, and it still would be absolutely perfect, no cutting out or anything. And if you are a Samsung fan, well, these Galaxy Buds 2 Pro will connect seamlessly to pretty much any Sami gear out there, certainly any of the latest stuff, including a couple of the most recent 2022 televisions. And if you've got yourself a Samsung Galaxy Watch, you can rather helpfully toggle the ANC mode, and you can also, at any given moment, deactivate those touch controls or switch them back on again, and also get an accurate readout of your Galaxy Buds 2 Pro battery life. And owners of Samsung smartphones will also enjoy improved audio quality here on the Buds 2 Pro, but more on all that in a bit. Now you do have some control of your Galaxy Buds 2 Pro if you dive on into the Bluetooth menu. As you can see there on your Samsung smartphone, you can again toggle the ANC, toggle the touch controls on and off, do a few other little bits and pieces. But if you don't have a Samsung smartphone or you want deeper customization, you'll have to download that Galaxy wearable app. This gives you access to all of the other features, including voice detect, 360 degree audio, and you can actually customize those touch controls in here. By default, as you can see there, it's just the single tap that is active as well as the touch and hold, but you can get a bit of double tap and triple tap action on the go. These can only be used for skipping tracks, however. Whereas if you go into touch and hold, for instance, you can see exactly what you want each bud to do when you do long press them. Again, toggle through the ANC, you can call up good old Bigsby, war great mate, otherwise you can tweak the volume or bring up Spotify. I found those touch controls worked an absolute charm. Usually first time of asking, you do exactly what you want to do. You've got full tonal feedbacks, you know, when it has screwed up. And even the double taps and the triple taps did the job. In that wearable app, you can also turn on the voice detect feature, which is thankfully switched off by default. This does do what it says on the tin. Basically, when the buds detect that you are talking, it will immediately lower the volume of whatever you're listening to and put you into the noise awareness mode so everything that's going on around you is filtered in. So the idea is somebody comes up to you, starts talking, you say, oh, hello there, or whatever, and the, immediately the volume goes down, the noise awareness turns on so you can have a conversation without removing the buds. And then once it detects you've stopped talking after a few seconds, it will then raise the volume back up and put it back into ANC mode or whatever you were in before. 
Of course, this feature ain't much good if you mumble to yourself all day long like I do. You'll just find that you're constantly turning on the noise awareness and lowering the volume of your music, which ain't great. Although thankfully, it usually doesn't activate when you just blurt out a word of a couple of syllables like bollocks or toss pot or whatever, so that's something. And like the Pixel Buds, you'll find plenty of other great features packed in here, like find my buds if you happen to lose the buggers down the back of the sofa or something, so lots of great little tools and stuff to play around with. So when it comes to the touch controls and the other features, I found again it was a pretty close call between the Pixel Buds and the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, but if you are a Samsung fan, you've got gear like the Samsung Galaxy Watch and a Samsung smartphone, then you're probably going to get more out of these Buds rather than the Pixel efforts. As for your assistant shenanigans, well here on the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, you've only got access to Bigsby, unfortunately, whereas of course it's the Google Assistant on the Pixel Buds, fully voice activated, as well as the ability to press and hold to call up that assistant if you're feeling a bit self-aware. You can, if you want to, have Bigsby announce any upcoming calendar events and also any text messages that pop through on your smartphone, but that's it, there's no support for any third-party apps unlike on the Pixel Buds Pro, where the good old Google Assistant can read out any WhatsApp messages and other bits that land on your smartphone. So I've got to say, certainly as far as the Assistant shenanigans is concerned, I preferred the Google Pixel Buds. Helps that I prefer the Google Assistant to Bigsby anyway. Now Samsung's fresh new buds do boast a triple mic setup for the active noise cancellation. It's not adaptive ANC, uh, just like the Pixel Buds does an absolutely fine job of dampening down traffic sounds and other background bollocks that's going on all around you. Not the absolute best out there, not as good as the likes of the Boses and the Sonys, but does a pretty damn fine job. It means you can stroll down a busy, bustling high street and listen to a podcast or an audiobook without having to boost the volume all the way up and risk wrecking your hearing. Just don't expect them to completely drown everything out and leave you in complete silence because that ain't gonna happen. The good news is, like the Pixel Buds, there's no wind feedback or anything as well, so overall it is a good experience. So yeah, between these and the Pixel Buds, definitely a draw as far as the noise cancelling goes. But what about the audio quality? Well, the sound has once again been fine-tuned by AKG here and it's mighty impressive stuff. Samsung's updated seamless codec means you get full 24-bit audio here. That sound is no longer downsampled to just 16-bit, so it's great news for high-res audio fans. But, and it is a pretty big but, if you want to enjoy that top quality 24-bit audio, you will need a Samsung smartphone running the latest One UI 4. And I've got to say, on the default settings, I really enjoyed the audio that was being spaffed into my lug holes, certainly the likes of metal, rock, a good bit of hip-hop as well, all sounded great. Some nice respectable bass from something so dinky, uh, but it didn't drown out the higher-end output. Vocals really shine as well, so great news for podcast and audiobook lovers especially. And if you're enjoying a bit of video on your Disney+, Plus, your Netflix or anything like that, you've got full Dolby Atmos support here as well for that nice cinematic surround sound experience. So overall, while I also enjoyed the sound quality of the Google Pixel Buds, the Buds 2 Pro certainly win if, again, you've got a Samsung smartphone, especially as the Pixel Buds, they didn't support LDAC or Aptex HD or any of those top-end codecs that you would expect from a pair of premium true wireless earbuds. And now it's time for a jolly spiffing old mic test, and I'm recording this audio using the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro built-in microphones. Just a nice quiet studio environment here, but I have found that they work really well when out and about as well, even with a lot of background noise, and just to prove that point, I'm now recording this portion of the audio sample while stood next to my speaker, which is blaring out really loud traffic sounds. And as you can hear, the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro microphone still clearly picking up my voice despite all of that background noise. And last up, the battery life, and here on the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, I found that the battery life reliably dropped just under 20% for every hour of use, and that was with the ANC turned on, so I got just over the quoted 5 hours of use with the noise cancellation. And then when they are drained, you can just bung them back in the very cute and colourful little box, which actually mirrors the colour of the buds themselves. This can fully recharge the buds just over two times in all, so giving you just under 20 hours of battery life from a full charge of the case and the buds, so not as strong as many rivals, unfortunately. A lot of them do tend to hit sort of 25, 30 hours. And unfortunately, the Pixel Buds do win in this round as well because they tend to offer sort of six to seven hours of use with that ANC turned on. But like the Pixel Buds, the case is again incredibly dinky and smooth and curvy as well, so very easy to slip into any pocket or bag going. And for added convenience, the actual cases themselves can be charged wirelessly if you happen to have reverse wireless charging on your smartphone, for instance. Otherwise, you've got a good bit of Type-C USB port action, you just slap in a wire, job done. And that right there is my full final frank review of the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and a bit of side-by-side -side action with the Pixel Buds just to see how they stack up. 
I gotta say, I really, really do like these True Wireless earbuds, but if you don't have all this Samsung gear to go with it, the likes of the Galaxy Watch, your Samsung smartphone, of course, to really enjoy the full range of features as well as that top quality audio, well, it's not worth that money. Instead, I would say maybe go for the Pixel Buds Pro, or maybe the Huawei Buds, something else a little bit more affordable instead. Anyway, that's what I reckon. What do you guys think? Definitely be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a rosy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!